2014, people gathered to pay respects to Mikhail Zhisnevsky on Maidan on his birthday. He was 25 when he was killed, just four days before his 26th birthday. On January 22nd, Mikhail was shot in the chest with a bullet used to stop vehicles. Until that day, Ukrainian police forces were using rubber bullets against Euromaidan protesters. On the 22nd, it was clear that they were ready to use combat ammunition, meaning there was no specific order not to use weapons that kill. Maybe at the level of unit commanders it was not noticed that someone wasn't chambering with rubber bullets, but with those that could kill a boar or breach a door. Mikhail Zhuznevsky was on Maidan from the very first day of the protests. I would go home sometimes, but he lived there. He was with several women he knew, had a few romances. And when he was laid to rest, I saw many women crying, ones I knew from Maidan. Maybe each of them thought that he was the man they were looking for. He was striking, with this interesting Belarusian accent. He was the type that women like, a bit of a troublemaker. Many remember the mischievous character of Zhuznevsky. He himself chose a pseudonym, or a call sign for himself. He called himself Loki. You know, it fit him. Loki in Scandinavian mythology is the god of mischief. He was like that. Always cheerful, could never sit still. I cannot even remember him ever being grim. He always smiled. A real Loki. Mikhail Zhuznevsky moved to Ukraine in 2005 because of his disagreement with the political regime in Belarus. He made friends quickly in Ukraine and, according to them, was someone who could be relied on. He was the kind of man who you could always rely on. I mean, if you knew that Loki is behind you, you didn't have to watch your back. Zhuznevsky was one of the most active participants of the Maidan Revolution. He was defending the Hrushevsky Street barricades in central Kyiv and became one of the first ones to die for the freedom of Ukraine. I can guarantee not even just 100 percent, but a billion percent. If he was still alive after what happened after the Maidan, I mean the war, he would be the first one to go and defend Ukraine. Mikhail was the first hero of the Heavenly Hundred whose funeral was held on the Maidan. On that day, for the first time, the Requiem song to all the victims of the revolution sounded. It was Zhuznevsky's favorite song, Plinikacha. <laughs> In 2017, Mikhail Zhuznevsky was posthumously honored with the Hero of Ukraine Award. Reported by Lyubov Zadorozhna, UATV.